Welcome back. We literally just finished playing mm -hmm. The Quarry on PS5, and this is going to be our spoiler-free review. Also, for anybody that hasn't checked out the trailer yet, we're not going to give you anything that's not in the trailer. For anybody that hasn't seen the trailer, I urge you to go check it out. And actually, we'll play it right now, in, as a matter of fact. Family is the most important thing in the world. But if your whole family, you know, like every last one of them decided to jump down the bottom of a well and they're all just hanging on the end of a rope, how can one person be expected to pull them all back out? You can't. So you pull on that rope and you're just going to fall right down to the bottom of the well with the rest of them. And what's the point of that? What? There is a lot more to this than you realize. Like what? Kidnapping, murder, cover-ups. I think the whole Hackett family is in on it. You have no idea what's going on here. Not a goddamn clue. All right, let's do this. Run! Who should I call? 911. You mean 911? Who says 911? Goodbye, cruel world. We gotta get out. I'm gonna enjoy watching you die. This isn't a ghost story. It's a creature feature. It's really happening and you're all in it. This is gonna get a little messy. Them's the rules, you noob. So we're gonna do a typical review style, what is kind of my style of yes. reviews. We have seven categories, we're gonna rip through them. First category is story. Absolutely. So. I know this is a spiritual successor to Until Dawn. Um, this is actually set in 2021. I kind of, when I tried to put it together, I thought it was set earlier than that. Well, there's a lot of cues in the game that makes you feel like it's set in the 90s. Exactly. There are 10 chapters. And a prologue. And a prologue at yeah. first, obviously. The game itself, the prologue was good. It gets you into the game. First, like Until Dawn did. Yes. Yeah. First three chapters, are, in my opinion, were pretty slow. They are slow. They're character building, character relationship building mm. chapters. Without giving away anything, as far as the story goes, I thought it was well scripted. Yeah. And there were parts in the story, like I said, up to chapter three, I found it very slow. Yes. And then it, it only got better the farther in you go. And it does play length. It does play uh, six to 10 hours, depending on, I guess, how much you do or how well you do. We were right in around that seven to eight hour mark. Seven to eight yeah. hour mark, yeah. It has a lot of inspiration from a lot of 90s movies, yeah. the horror movie genres. 70s, 80s, 90s. Yeah, I was really, like for me, I didn't watch a lot of horror movies from the 70s, no. but I was relating to the 80s and 90s. And there's And some, I was naming them all. You were, we were. You were. We'll and there's some it. fanfare. There is definitely some fanfare. Yeah. Depending on your choices, obviously. Yes. Because that's the way it works. This story, the game, is based on choices that you make. Absolutely. Yeah. Just like Until Dawn was. Yes. Yeah. When it was all said and done, I was actually very pleased with yes. how it ended for us. Difficulty wise, I think they took a step back from Until Dawn. We were both not impressed. Yeah. From all the way up to chapter seven, when I was like, I really wish they hadn't uh, made the quick time events so easy. Yes. It's ridiculously easy. And it was so ridiculously yeah. easy that I missed one anticipating it, waiting for the quick time event to happen. I was like, I'm just like, it didn't affect anything. I don't think I missed a single quick time. You event. didn't, and I missed that one. Yeah. I missed that one. Don't. Um, there is an option of, uh, you have to press your X sometimes. You got a button mash. You got a button yeah. mash. In the settings, there is an option to have that set, so you just have to hold the button in, which I guess would be good because you're not putting wear and tear on your controller. Yeah. So that would have been better. I wish they would have gave you a sliding scale of difficulty. S sliding scale went from what they gave us, because we didn't change anything, Yeah. to only getting easier, which 
Yeah. I can't imagine. There's it, actually, there are different modes in this. We'll yes. get into that when we get into gameplay. Exactly. Um, there's also, at the end of the game, once you complete it, you will unlock another mode yeah. of difficulty. Makes it even easier. <laughs> yes. So I, I don't know this if I should give that away, game, but that is in a package you yeah. can buy for the game too. Anyway, short and sweet, difficulty, there not, is none. No, <laughs> no it's difficulty. not difficult. <laughs> your, your most difficult thing is the choices you make. Yeah. That that plays into yeah. difficulty, but I, you can't ever change that. You're always going to make the choice you make. Yeah. Gameplay-wise. Gameplay-wise, Gameplay it plays a lot like Until Dawn. Um, yep. Yeah but a lot easier. They have improved the camera and your player movement, which yes. was pretty janky in the first one from what I remember. Yeah, yeah. I say the first one. It, it's This is not a sequel to Until Dawn. No. As far as anything else about gameplay? Gameplay goes without giving away a whole lot. Yeah. Here's what I described it as yeah. right up until the last. I call it a walking movie simulator. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I. I think that's fair. And it's, I I don't, I haven't looked up to see well, how they describe it, but it's very much a walking movie simulator. Let's yeah. just put there was not many times that caught us off guard. No. No. No, no. So, I, I, it, they. You, you, you die. I can't see anybody dying because they missed quick time events. No. Our deaths were all based on choices. They, the, they were all yeah. based on choices. Yeah. And when you when you do die, there's it, it's lackluster. The, what happens afterwards is a little bit lackluster. It's, it's, it's kind of a... It, we were like, that was weird. <laughs> yeah, and I think you don't realize you died until you start... We didn't know who was dead until the end of the game. And that was the same thing with Until Dawn. You never knew anybody yeah, was dead until you, you absolutely die, yeah. knew they were dead. Graphics. Graphics, well, I'm telling you what. There there are moments in this game where I was absolutely dumbfounded, jaw-dropping, and actually swore up and down <laughs> on a few scenes that I said, they fucking recorded this. Yeah. <laughs> they they filmed it. They they must have screwed up. They ran out of time. They filmed this part. I and, and you know what? I can totally agree with that. Yeah. And then there was a lot more times that the voice was off, the lips moving. There was some glitches. There were a lot of little glitches. Like yes. Hair shuddering, like pixels maybe around people. There you know shadow yeah. like stuff is moving. It's a lot of those little, but nothing terrible. No, nothing game nothing, breaking. Nothing no, game breaking at no, all. No, it actually performed pretty well. Um, I assume there'll I, be patches for that that'll improve that stuff. The biggest thing yeah. I think that bothered us the most, especially at the first, is because uh, when they're talking, the mouth was Godzilla-ish. Yeah, always <laughs> it was like almost too open. Yeah. And then other times in the game, you're like, wow. Mm -hmm. They nailed that. I don't know who was working on that part of the game. But <laughs> there was one specific character for us that really bothered us with the mouth, and that was Emma. Emma, yeah. Emma's mouth really bothered us. I was like, I feel like she's probably a pretty girl in real life, and they did there a lot of injustice with that mouth. I'm yeah. like, why am I seeing your back molars when you talk? I don't yeah. see people's back molars when they talk. So, so it just it was weird. But I'm uh, I'm thinking. We were talking that possibly going back and play. I, I mm -hmm. want. We're gonna play it again. Absolutely. But we're, I think we're possibly gonna play this maybe closer to Halloween. Mm -hmm. And I'm and hoping by then maybe they'll patch it and it'll all look pretty damn good because it there has, are scenes that are just like. It has the potential. Whoa. It has yeah. the potential to look yeah. amazing. It. it really, there were really points does. where I was actually nervous last night because we had been playing for probably five hours and I was like, I wonder how hard. This is pushing the PS5. Yeah. Because there are points, there are graphics. You're like, what the hell? I'm it, watching a movie. I know. So. It's it's really true. Yeah. So graphics uh, had its high points, had its low points. Music and sound. There. This is uh, <laughs> the music. There are two choices when you start playing the yes. game. Yes. Yeah. If you want to stream this game, you have a choice of picking music that is not copyright, copyright royalty free, which royalty -free, I thought was which is brilliant. great. That's a fantastic yeah. option. 
but we weren't streaming, so we picked the music that was intended for the game. Yes. And let me tell you, I thought there were a lot of odd choices of music. Especially selection. for a horror game. Uh, mu music is supposed to set the tone for you, tell yeah. people how to feel, and I was just... Sometimes we were like... Shaking my head sometimes. like we should be making out on the chairs over there, maybe. Uh, but yeah, there was one scene though in particular where the music does like pump up and it really set the tone and yep. i was like this it, this is what we needed in yeah. other parts it made us we were, all, we were on edge a little bit a little bit on edge yeah and that never happened through the game at all no except for that one time for yeah me. yeah it wasn't as scary as i wanted it to be no it, and because those quick time events were so easy yeah. it took away that tense tension i guess yeah. of like and stress of knowing if you'd make it but uh, character acting, character voice acting, acting uh, yeah, there was a lot of actors oh my in God. this game, so they all know how to act and, and voice acting and all that, and it was all spot on. And you're Absolutely. gonna recognize characters when you're playing. Oh yeah, there's some big names in there. I was most excited for Ethan Suffley, Randy from <laughs> My Name Is Earl. How I long was it before he got a line? <laughs> I, they, I swear the game was like three quarters of the way through before he said anything. I, was I like, know. I was like, just let him talk. Yeah. Just let him talk. But I was very excited to see him in there. And there's going to be a lot of recognizable faces yeah. in the game and a lot of recognizable voices. Yep. Yeah. So I. Now it's crazy to see where games are going and who they can get. Music was a little rough for me. Voice acting was spot on. Oh, wonderful. Um, now, when I think of a sounds, I always think of ambient sounds uh, to try to get that creep factor, especially when it comes to setting an atmosphere for survival horror. They didn't do a good job because there was never no. on edge. They did not. I at no point did I think this game was scary. No, no, no. So they could have upped those ambient sounds more. They could have did something. I yeah, don't know. there. I mean, there was. I, I, there was some that I'm like, I'm sure that's what they were going for. Maybe we're just a little bit desensitized. I think we are desensitized. We play a lot so, of horror yeah, games, so yeah. maybe it's just us. I yeah. don't know. Value, Value and replay. And replayability. Yeah. Uh, like I said already, we're we've already played through it mm -hmm. once, and it was we plan on seven to eight hours game. gameplay. Yeah, and uh, we are definitely gonna play it again. Now the good part about it, because we played it as a couch co-op experience, yes. two of us, and you can play up to eight players. Next time we'll yep. play. Me and you and Dennis will play, and yes. then you can split up the characters amongst the players. Yeah. So. You know, but you choices can remote are all play different. With this, you can remote yes. play, yep. which is really great. Um, another you can play online. We thought would be fun to do is draw names from a hat and you have, you pick have, your characters yeah, that way. You have six characters, right? No, you can play up to eight people, so you have eight characters. Oh, is there eight characters? Yes. Yeah. I don't know how we're going to divide that amongst three of us. After playing through it, I'm I'm more curious now to see mm -hmm. the differences in my choices. Yeah, it's a hundred dollars Canadian. Because it's a $89.99 plus tax game. If you're in New Brunswick, it's over $100 because our tax is it, ridiculous. It, I always stand pretty solid on this fact. If I'm paying $100, I should get more than an eight hour game. And you are, you can play it plus, multiple times yeah. and get different outcomes. I, I understand that. Yes, but I get what you're saying. Do you know what saying. I'm saying? For that price point. You could get a 40 hour game that makes I've you had your worse. life for 40 hours. I have, <laughs> yeah, I've had a lot worse. I've had worse where Absolutely. I, I played, you know, I bought a game day one for the $89.99 plus yeah. tax and like had five hours of gameplay and was absolutely pissed off. I feel like I'm this... not pissed off. I just wish there was a little bit more. Personally? Yeah. I think this was a $49.99 game. I, I'm right there. $49.59 would have been a way more palatable price for us. But it is an $89.99 game because it is living in the shadow of Until Dawn. Because and I thought Until Dawn was a better game. Well, <laughs> it, you also have to take into the account of the amount of production that went into it with all the actors yes. that you have to pay. Yes, that's so, true too. That's probably that's what you're true for. too. Okay. Overall. Overall. Now I think I have two things that I want to talk about when we get into the overall. Yeah. We both want to do a out of ten score. Yeah. But then I also want to give it a score for how scary it was. Because this is survival horror. Yes. It's, so so we'll out do, of 10 for... Out of 10, we both had the exact same number. Yeah, we yeah. did. 
And we both gave it a 7 out of 10. Yeah, and 7, I think, is a very good score. Yeah. I, I still think there's, you it know, was, there's a lot of value there. I couldn't get it. There was no way it was an 8, but it definitely wasn't a 6. No. And I'm not going to start breaking up numbers. And no. Point this no, now. exactly. So, We're not doing that. Yeah. No. With a patch and improving on some things, do you think it could get it to an 8? I think there'll be a lot of people that will think it's an eight or above because yeah. there's a lot of people that don't like getting scared, and that's true. And the like, ease of the controls, yes. And you're you're basically playing an eight-hour movie or so. They did you know. make it more playable for more people, I guess, with yes. making those quick time events much easier. Yeah. But it took away from the tension, which yeah. is what we wanted. Now, I will tell you what, the last three chapters of the game is what saved it for me. Be Absolutely. Because before that, it was pushing like a four. Yeah. <laughs> so the game got better. As far as scary? Scary. Yeah, I was thinking the exact same thing. That's what I was giving you for scary. It's two and not two. for number two. Just A two-year-old two. could play this. Uh, yeah, it's not, <laughs> it's not at all scary. There's some blood. There's some bad stuff you wouldn't want a kid to see there, but it really wasn't bad. There was only one part of this where it gave me a little bit of, I was a little bit stressed out when they're in the water. I don't like deep water. Oh. I don't like not knowing what's underneath, and that's just because that's a me situation. That wouldn't be an everybody thing. Yeah. And that was it. I was just like, oh, I hate getting in the water. That yeah. was it. That was it. So, overall, seven, scare factor, two. Yeah. Could you wait to pick it up and play it? Probably. Uh, It'll. It's gonna go down in price, and it's yeah. gonna be patched. So. Yeah. Great pickup for Halloween there yeah. if you can get it on sale. Exactly. Yeah. Save a few bucks. Pick it up at Halloween. Yep. It's 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 a good game. It, it would be a good, good game. a good game to sit down with a group of people and play it on Halloween as a little yep. get together. Absolutely. Um, the only thing about the couch co-op thing I wish they had have done something with is that you hand the controller around. Yes. I understand. Why Why can't I understand that the controllers are expensive and most people don't have more than one or two, mm -hmm. but... But if you're remote playing, there's got to be a way to do it because you would have your own device yeah. to remote. There's got to be an option. Be maybe we missed it in the comments. Maybe Let me know. Dumb. Because, yeah, maybe we're dumb. Because I would much rather have three of us playing with three different controllers. Yeah, I my hands get to ten, get, tend to get a little bit sweaty because I get nervous. And yeah. then if you got to play after me, then you're like, oh, gross. gross. <laughs> so yeah, that was the only thing we thought would be, would have been nice with that. All right, call it play. Till next time, guys. Game on. Game on. <laughs>